In this episode, I'm going to show you how I used Lightroom to take this image and make it look like this. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this episode of Exploring Photography. I am Mark Wallace and I just returned from shooting in the hills outside the Kathmandu Valley and I was able to capture this pretty spectacular sunset. Now I did that without using any kind of HDR trickery. This is a single shot that I took in my camera using my RAW file, but to get it, I had to push my RAW file to the max. You can see that the original file is totally underexposed. It's lifeless, it has no color, nothing. But after some pretty extensive post-processing, I was able to create this image. Let's start with the image itself. I shot this using my Leica uh, M Type 240 with my 35 millimeter lens. I shot this at F8 ISO 200 and I shot it at 180th of a second handheld. And so you can see that when I shot this image, I exposed for the highlights for the sky and the shadows all fell into darkness. But that's okay. If you shoot raw, you can bring all that life back into your image. So let me show you how I did that. So let's dive into Lightroom right now. We're in Lightroom and I have a virtual copy of my finished product. So this is the finished post-processed, fully processed image. And if I go back one, this is the image before anything was done. And you can see that if we compare those side by side, that there is a significant change between the before image and the after image. Now the way that I went about this is I processed this using a global change and also a local change. So let me go to the finished product here and what we'll do is we'll dive into the develop module and I'll show you exactly some of the things that I did and then we'll go back from the beginning and do all of that. So you'll notice that the bottom of this image right here with all this green, that was originally in shadow, very, very dark. So we needed to apply some adjustments to that and the sky globally. The entire image had to have some changes made to it. And then I needed to make some changes to the sky without messing up the bottom here. And I did that using a gradient filter. So if I click on the gradient filter over here and then I hover over this little dot, you'll see that what I changed is red and what I didn't change is still the normal colors, the greens down there. So the sky was adjusted separate from the overall image. So I think of that uh, as a global change, everything, and then a local change, just the sky. All right, now that we know that was done, let's go to the original image, this underexposed, very dark image. Now when I shot this, I knew that my camera handled the shadows very well and I could pull some things out. You're going to need to play with your camera to see exactly how far you can push your RAW files. Now what I can do is I can turn on my shadow and highlight warnings by hitting the J key and you'll see that I have a loss of detail in the sky right here where the sun is, that's the red, and you'll see I have some loss of, there's just nothing where this blue is, but everywhere else we've got a lot of latitude to play with. And so uh, originally I thought I was going to have to shoot this with an HDR image, but it turns out that my normal RAW file had enough information to get me from this really dark image to this really beautiful image. So let's start. The first thing I do when I approach this are the global changes. This is underexposed. We don't have any detail here in the shadows, in the valley. And so what I did originally is I went over here to the exposure slider. I'm gonna bring everything up by about a stop, just a little over a stop. So we'll take it to about one and 1.1, something like that. And so that's starting to give me some detail in the shadows. I don't wanna go any more than that, any farther than that, because if I do, I'm gonna to start to lose detail in the sky. So that's why we're gonna deal with the sky separately than these shadows here on the bottom. The shadows still need some work. And so this is where it gets sort of crazy. I'm going to take these shadows and I'm going to slide the shadows slider all the way to 100, way over. This is something that's really rare. I don't normally do that, but in this instance, that gives me all the detail down here in the shadows that I really need. But the problem is up here in the sky and in some of the buildings, my highlights are overexposed. They need to take them down. And so normally I take them down a little bit, but in this instance, I'm taking those all the way down by 100. So this is really rare that you'll see highlights negative 100, shadows plus 100, but you can see that we're getting detail right here around this, the sun coming out of the, uh, the clouds. And we're getting detail in all of these buildings down here. So we're really pulling out the full dynamic range of this raw file. We still need to do some more. 
the contrast of this image isn't really contrasted. We need to kick that up. So I'm going to take the blacks here, and I'm going to take those down just a little bit, about 10, maybe 12. And that gives us a little bit more contrast down here in these houses. And then I'm going to do something that I don't normally do, and that's play with this clarity slider. I'm just going to bring it up about 15 or 20. What that's going to do is give me just a little bit more contrast and bring out the details of these buildings. So about 2018, something like that. So that's really giving me some details down here. Now I need to do some more to this. What I want to do is I want to make sure that I have nice vibrance. So I've already brought that up to about 15 and that's pretty good. Okay, now we need to start working on the sky. We need to bring in more detail. And I'm seeing up here in the sky, I've got one, two, three little dust spots. So I'm gonna get rid of those very, very quickly here using my, my heel brush here. So I'm gonna click on that as my spot edit. I've got another um, issue up here in the sky. I'll close that, I'll zoom back out. I've got one right there. So I'll click on that, make sure my brush size is large enough, bam. Get rid of this one right here, bam. Okay, so I've fixed my dust spots in the sky, but I still need to fix some contrast in the sky, and then we need to do some overall color correction. So what I need to do to fix this sky is to go over here, I'm gonna use a gradient filter. Now to show you what a gradient filter does, I'm going to use this effect of exposure. And let me show you what happens. I'm going to sort of drag this right about here, something like this at an angle. And you can see where I have taken the exposure down up here. We have that. And then here it starts to fade out. And then the center line is where the gradient, the center of the gradient is. And it's totally faded out by this second line. So total effect up here starts to fade out at the first line. The midpoint is this middle line. It fades all the way out by this second. So if you want a, a more um, a sharper transition, you can bring these lines closer together. If you want something that's a little bit more of a smooth transition, you can bring these out. So I'm gonna put them about like this. I don't want this underexposed, by the way. I'm just showing you this so you can see exactly what this effect is. So I'm gonna take this exposure back to zero. The exposure was just fine, but I need to start playing with some other things. The highlights, I need to take those down. So I'm gonna take the highlights down just a bit, about, about 25, 23, something like that. That's gonna start giving me some more details in the clouds up here. I also need to take my whites and increase those. So I'm gonna take those up by about 43, 45, something like that. That's giving me more contrast. But I need to take my blacks now and take those down. So I'll take those down by about 20, 25-ish, 27, 25, that looks pretty good. And so what I've done is I've created a lot of contrast in the sky. This little switch right here lets me see uh, how that looks. So I can turn it off, see it sort of looks sort of low contrast, turn it on, bam, I've got my contrast the way I want it. So I'm going to close that. So now I've made a global adjustment to everything, brought out the shadows, brought down the highlights, and then I added contrast to the sky and we're almost there. The last thing we need to do is make this look like a glorious sunset, and glorious sunsets are golden. And so to do that, I'm going to take my color temperature and I'm gonna increase it way up into about the 6,000 range. So 6,100 around there, and that gives us that nice golden look. That's all there is to it. I just took these and really pushed my shadows and took my highlights all the way down and made sure I used a gradient filter to add contrast to the sky. And so if I click reset, you can see exactly what that looked like before. I'll undo that. That's what it looked like after. I think you'll agree that we didn't need a high definition or a high dynamic range image, HDR image, we were able to get all the detail that we needed out of this one RAW file by pushing it to its limits. RAW files and Lightroom are made to go together because you can push those RAW files to the max and make some pretty spectacular images. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget, if you're not sure what RAW files are or how to use Lightroom, or you want some tips on how to create better scenic photos, zip on over to the Adorama Learning Center or click subscribe so you don't miss a single episode of Adorama TV. Both of them are absolutely free, so click the button and subscribe today. Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you again next time.
Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.